already being moved. I will take the wall of any man or maid of Montague's. That shows thee a weak slave for the weakest ghost of the wall. True, and therefore women, being the weaker vessels, are ever thrust to the wall. The quarrels between our masters and us, their men. But thou art not quickly moved to strike. A dog of the house of Montague moves me. To move is to stir, and to be valiant is to stand. Therefore, if thou art moved, thou runst away. A dog of that house moves me to stand. Draw thy tool. Here comes the house of Montague. My naked weapon is out. <laughs> Quarrel, I will back thee. How? Turn thy back and run. Fear me not. Let us take the law of our sides. Let them begin. I will frown as I pass by and let them take it as they list. Nay, as they dare, I shall bite my thumb at them, which is a disgrace to them if they bear it. <laughs> do you bite your thumb at us, sir? I do bite my thumb, sir. Do you bite your thumb at us, sir? Is the law of our sides if I say I? No. <laughs> no, sir, I do not bite my thumb at you, sir, but I do bite my thumb, sir. Do you quarrel, sir? Quarrel, sir? <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> if you do, sir, I am for you, for I serve as good a man as you. No better? Well, sir. Say better. Here comes one of my master's kinsman. Yes. Better. You lie. Come, if you be men. Gregory, remember thy washing oh. blow. Montagues and thee. Have at thee, coward. Down with it, Ralph! Down with it! Kill it! Stop it! Kill it! Stop it! Come on! Oh, what noise is this? Sweet. Give Sweet. me my long sword now! A crutch, a crutch! Why call you for a sword? My sword, I say, hold! Oh, hold Montagues, come! Yeah. Down, villain! Yeah. Yeah. Hold me back! Let me go! Thou shalt not stir a foot to seek a foe! Oh. <laughs> Towards him I made, but he was ware of me and stole into the cover of the wood. Oh, many a morning hath he there been seen, adding to clouds, more clouds with his deep sighs. Then private in his chamber pens himself, shuts up his windows, locks fair daylight out, and makes himself an artificial knight. My noble uncle, do you know the cause? I neither know it nor can learn of him. Have you importuned him by any means? Both by myself and many other friends. 
But he is his own affections counselor. Could we but learn from whence his sorrows grow, we would as willingly give cure as no. Oh, see where he comes. So please you step aside. I'll know of his grievance or be much denied. Ah, good morrow, cousin. Is the day so young? But new struck nine. Aye, me sad hours seem long. Was that my father that went hence so fast? It was. What sadness lengthens Romeo's hours? Not having that which having makes them short. In love. Out of love. Out of her favor where I am in love. Ah, alas, that love so gentle in his view should be so tyrannous and rough in proof. Alas, that love whose view is muffled still should without eyes see pathways to his will. Where shall we dine? I me, my fray was here. Yet tell me not, for I have heard it all. Here's much to do with hate, but more with love. Why then, O oh, brawling love, O oh, loving hate, O oh, anything of nothing first created? This love feel I that feel no love in this. Dost thou not laugh? No, cause I rather weep. Good heart? At what? At thy good heart suppression. <laughs> Why, such is love's transgression. Farewell, my cousin. Uh, soft, I will go along. And if you leave me so, you do me wrong. Tut, I have lost myself. I am not here. This is not Romeo. He's some other where. So, tell me in sadness. Who is that you love? In sadness, cuz I do love a woman. <laughs> I am so near when I supposed you loved. A right good mark, man, and she's fair I love. A right fair mark, fair cuz, is soonest hit. And in that hit you miss, she'll not be hid with Cupid's arrow. She hath Diane's wit, and in strong proof of chastity well armed, from love's weak childish bow she lives uncharmed. <laughs> That she hath sworn that she will still live chaste? She hath, and in that sparing makes huge waste. She hath forsworn to love, and in that vow do I live dead that live to tell it now. <sighs> Be ruled by me, forget to think of her. Oh, teach me how I should forget to think. By giving liberty unto thine eyes, examine other beauties. Farewell, thou canst not teach me to forget. I I'll pay that doctrine, or else die in debt. Montague is bound as well as I, in penalty alike. And tis not hard, I think, for men so old as we, to keep the peace. Of honorable reckoning are you both, <sighs> and pity tis you've lived the odds so long. But now, my lord, what say you to my suit? But saying o'er what I've said before, my child is yet a stranger in the world. Let two more summers wither in their pride, ere we may think. Are ripe to be a bride. Younger than she, our happy mother's maid. And too soon marred are those so early made. But woo her, gentle Paris, get her heart. My will to her consent is but a part. This night I hold an old accustomed feast, whereto I have invited many a guest, such as I love, and you among the store. One more most welcome makes my number more. Come go with me. <laughs> Ah, sirrah, go trudge about to fair where you'll now find those persons out whose names are written there. And to them say, my house and welcome on their pleasure stay. <laughs> uh, aunt. Come go with me. Uh, aunt. Uh, aunt. <laughs> find them out whose names are written. that the fisher should meddle with his pencils and the painter with his neck. But I cannot find what names the writing person here hath writ. Uh, I must have learned it in good time. Touch, man, one fire burns out another's burning. One pain is lessened by another's anguish. Take thou some new infection to the eye, and the rank poison of the old will die. Your plantain leaf is excellent for that. For what, I pray thee? For your broken shin. Ah! Why, Romeo, art thou mad? Not mad, but bound more than a madman is. Shut up in prison, get without my food. Whip and tormented and... Good e'en, good fellow. Thank you, good e'en. I pray, sir, can you read? Hi, mine own fortune in my misery. Perhaps you've learned it without books. But I pray, sir, can you read anything you see? Aye, if I know the letters and the language. Uh, you speak honestly. 
Where's your berry? Stay, fellow, I can read. Oh. Senor Martino and his wife and daughter, County Anselm, and his beauteous sisters, Senor Potencio and his lovely nieces, Mercutio and his brother Valentine, my uncle Capulet, his wife and daughters, my fair niece Rosaline. <laughs> Senor Valencio and his cousin Tybalt, <laughs> Lucio and the lively Helena. A fair assembly, whither should they come? Ah. Whither? To supper? To our house. Uh, whose house? My master's? Indeed, I should have asked you that before. Oh, now I'll tell you without asking. My master is the great and rich Capulet. Oh, and if you be not of the house of Montague, I shall come and crush a cup of wine. Rest you, Mary. <laughs> At the same ancient feast of Capulet, sups the fair Rosaline, whom thou so loves. Go thither, and with unattainted eye, compare her face with some that I shall show, and I will make thee think thy swan a crop. One fairer than my love, the all-seeing sun ne'er saw her match since the world first begun. Taught you saw her fair, none else be by. Herself points with herself in either eye. But in that crystal scales, let there be weighed your lady's love against some other maid that I will show you shining at this feast, and she shall scant so well that now shows best. Nurse, where's my daughter? Call her forth to me. Now by my maiden head, a twelve-year-old, I bade her come. What lamb, what ladybird, God forbid, where's this girl? What Julia? Come now, who calls? Your mother. Madam, I am here. What is your will? This is the matter. Nurse, give leave a while. We must talk in secret. Nurse, come back again. I have remembered me. Thou hear our counsel. Thou knowest my daughter's of a pretty age. Faith, I can tell her age unto an hour. She's not sixteen. I'll lay sixteen of my teeth. She's not sixteen. How long is it now to Lammas tide? A fortnight and odd days. <laughs> Even or odd of all the days in the year, come Lammas even night, shall she be sixteen. Susan and she, God rest all Christian souls, were of an age. While Susan is with God, she was too good for me. But as I said, on Lammas even night, shall she be sixteen, that shall she marry, I remember it well. Tis since the earthquake, now thirteen years, and she was weaned, I never shall forget it, of all the days of the year upon that day. For I had then laid wormwood to my dove, sitting in the sun under the dovehouse wall. My lord and you were then at Mantua, nay, I do bear a parade. But as I said, when it did taste the wormwood on the nibble of my duck, and felt it bitter pretty cruel to see it tetchy and fall out with the duck. And since that time, it is thirteen years. For then she could stand alone, nay, by the root, she could have run and waddled all about. For even the day before, she broke her brow, and then my husband, God be with his soul, <laughs> a was a merry man, took up the child, yea, quoth he, dost thou fall upon thy face, thou wilt fall backward when thou hast more wit, wilt thou not, Jewel? And by my holy damn, the pretty wretch left crying and said, I, to see now how a jest shall come about. I warrant, and I shall live a thousand years, I never should forget it. Quoth my husband, wilt thou fall upon thy face? And pretty fool instinted and said, I. Enough of this, I pray thee, hold thy peace. Yes, madam. <laughs> <laughs> yet I could not choose but laugh to think it should leave crying and say, I. And yet I warrant it had upon its brow a bump as big as a young cockerel's stone, <laughs> a perilous knock, and it cried bitterly. Yea, quoth my husband, falls upon thy face, thou wilt fall backward when thou comest to aid. Wilt thou not, Jewel? It stinted and said, I. And stint thou too, I pray thee, nurse, say I. Oh, peace I have done. God mark thee to his grace. Thou wast the prettiest babe that e'er I nursed. And I might live to see thee married once. I have my wish. Mary, that Mary is the very theme I came to talk of. Tell me, daughter Juliet. How stands your disposition to be married? It is an hour that I dream not of. Oh, an hour? Were not I thine only nurse, I would say thou hadst sucked wisdom from my teeth. 
Well, think of marriage now. Younger than you here in Verona, ladies of esteem are made already mothers. By my count, I was your mother much upon these years that you are now a maid. Thus then, in brief, the valiant Paris seeks you for his love. A man, young lady, lady such a man is all the world. Why, he's a man of wax. Grow the summer hath not such a flower. Nay, in a flower, in faith, a very flower. What say you? Have you loved the gentleman? This night you shall behold him at our feast. Read o'er the volume of young Paris's face and find delights writ there with beauty's pen. Examine every several liniment and see how one another lens contends. And what obscure in this fair volume lies, find written in the margins of his eyes. So shall you share all that he doth possess by having him making yourself no less. No less, nay bigger. Women grow by men. <laughs> Speak briefly. Can you like a Paris love? I'll look to like if looking, liking move. Madam! The guests are come. Supper served up. You called, my young lady asked for? <laughs> the nurse cursed in the pantry and everything in extremity. I must hence to wait and be feet be followed straight. We follow thee. Juliet, the county stays. Go, girl, seek happy nights to happy days. La, 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 what la, shall la. this speech be spoke for our excuse, or shall we on without apology? Uh, the date is out of such prolixity. But let them measure us by what they will. We'll measure them a measure and be gone. Give me the torch. I am not for this ambling. Being but heavy, I will bear the light. Nay, gentle Romeo, we must have you dance. Not I, believe me. You have dancing shoes with nimble soles. I have a soul of lead, so stakes me to the ground, I cannot move. You are a lover. Borrow Cupid's wings and soar with them above a common bound. I am too sore and pierced with his shaft. Under love's heavy burden do I sink. And to sink in it, should you burden love, too great oppression for a tender thing. Is love a tender thing? It is too rough, too rude, too boisterous, and it pricks like thorn. If love be up with you, be up with love. Prick love for pricking, and you beat love down. Give me a case to put my visage in. A visor for a visor. What care I, what curious eye doth quote deformities here? or the beetle brows shall blush for me. Come knock and enter, and no sooner in, but every man betake him to his legs. A torch for me. Let wantons, light of heart, tickle the senseless rushes with their heels. Come, we burn daylight, ho. Oh. Nay, that's not so. I mean, sir, in delay, wish on lights in vain. Light? Lights by day. And we mean well in going to this mask, but tis no wit to go. Why, may one ask? I dreamt a dream tonight. So did I. <laughs> well, what was yours? That dreamers often lie. In bed asleep while they do dream things true. Oh, then I see Queen Mab hath been with you. Queen Mab, what's she? She is the fairy's midwife. And she comes in shape no bigger than an agate stone, drawn with a team of little atomi athwart men's noses while they lie asleep. Her wagon spooks are made of long spinners' webs, the cover of the wings of grasshoppers, her collar of the moonshine's watery beam. Her wagoner is a small gray-coated fly, not half so big as is a little worm. And in this sort, she gallops up and down through lovers' brains, and then they dream of love, or lawyers' fingers who straight dream on fees, or ladies' lips, who dream on kisses straight, which oft the angry mab with blisters plagues, because their breaths with sweet meats tainted are. <laughs> Sometimes she gallops o'er courtier's nose, then dreams he of smelling out a suit. Sometimes she gallops o'er a soldier's neck, then dreams he of cutting foreign throats. Breaches, ambuscados, Spanish blades of health, five fathom deep, and then anon drums in his ear. 
with which he starts and wakes, and being thus frighted, swears a prayer or two, and sleeps again. This is that very map that plates the manes of horses in the night, and bakes the elf locks in foul sluttish hairs, which once untangled, much misfortune bodes. This is the hag that when maids lie on their backs, presses them and learns them first to bear, making them women of good carriage. This is she. Peace, peace, for keep your peace. Thou talkst of nothing. True. <laughs> I talk of dreams, which are the children of an idle brain, begot of nothing but vain fantasy which is as thin a substance as the air, and more inconstant than the wind. This wind you talk of blows us from ourselves. Supper is done, and we shall come too late. I fear too early, for my mind misgives some consequence yet hanging in the stars. But he that hath the steerage of my course direct my suit. On, lusty gentlemen, strike drum. That makes dainty, she have a swear at thorns. <laughs> Am I come near me now? Welcome, gentlemen. I have seen the day that I have worn a visor and could tell a whispering tale in a fair lady's ear, such as would please. Tis gone, tis gone, tis gone. <laughs> you are welcome, gentlemen. Come, musicians, play. <laughs> Nay, said good cousin Capulet, for you and I are past our dancing days. How long is it now since last yourself and I were in a mask? By Our Lady, thirty years. What, man, tis not so much, tis not so much. Some five and twenty years, and then we mask. Tis more, tis more. Will you tell me that? Oh, she doth teach the torches to burn bright. It seems she hangs upon the cheek of night, has a rich jewel in an Ethiop's ear, beauty too rich for use, for earth too dear. Did my heart love till now, for swear at sight, for I ne'er saw true beauty till this night. This by his voice should be a Montague. Fetch me my rapier, boy. <sighs> what? Dares the slave come hither? covered with an antic face to fleer and scorn at our solemnity. Now by the stock and honor of my kin, to strike him dead I hold it not a sin. Why, how now, kinsman? Wherefore storm you so? Uncle, this is a Montague, our foe, hither come in spite to scorn at our solemnity this night. Young Romeo, is it? Tis he, that <laughs> villain Romeo. Content thee, gentle cuz, let him alone. Now bears him like a portly gentleman. And to say truth, Verona brags of him to be a virtuous and well-governed youth. I would not, for the wealth of all the town, 
here in my house do him disparagement. Therefore be patient, take no note of him. It is my will, the which if thou respect, show a fair presence, and put up these frowns, an ill-beseeming semblance for a feast. It fits when such a villain is a guest. I'll not endure him. He shall be endured. <sighs> what, Edmund boy? I say he shall. Those two, you will not endure him. God shall mend my soul. You will make a mutiny among the guests. You will set cock a hoop. You will be the man. My uncle, tis a shame. Go to, go to. You are a saucy boy. So indeed, you must contrary me. Mary, it is time. Well said, my heart. You are a prince, Cox. Go! Be quiet or I'll make... More light! More light! For shame, I will make you quiet. What, what cheerily, my heart! Come, go with me. I will withdraw, but this intrusion shall, now seeming sweet, convert to bitter gall. If I profane with my unworthiest hand this holy shrine, the gentle sin is this, my lips, two blushing pilgrims did ready stand to smooth that rough touch with a tender kiss. Good pilgrim, you do wrong your hand too much, which mannerly devotion shows in this, for saints have hands, which pilgrims' hands do touch, and palm to palm is holy palmer's kiss. Have not saints lips and holy palmers too? I, pilgrim, lips that they must use in prayer. Oh, <laughs> then, dear saint, let lips do what hands do. They pray, grant thou, lest faith turn to despair. Saints do not move, though grant for prayer's sake. Then move not while my prayer's effect I take. Thus from my lips by thine my sin is purged. Then have my lips the sin that they have took. Sin from my lips? Oh, trespass sweetly urged. Give me my sin again. <laughs> <laughs> you kiss by the book. Madam, your mother craves a word with you. What is her mother? Mary Bachelor. Her mother is the lady of the house. I nurse her daughter that you talked withal. <laughs> I tell you, he that can lay hold of her shall have the chinks. Is she a Capulet? Oh, to your account, my life is my foe's debt. Ooh. Away, be gone. Uh, the sport is at the best. Aye, so I fear the more is my unrest. Nay, gentlemen, prefer not to be gone. We are a trifling foolish oh. banquet oh. towards. Is it eat so? <laughs> Why, then I thank you all. I thank you, honest gentlemen. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Come hither, nurse. What is yon gentleman? I know not. Go ask his name. If he be married, my grave is like to be my wedded bed. <laughs> his name is Romeo and a Montague? the only son of your great enemy. My only love sprung from my only hate, too early seen, unknown, and known too late. Prodigious birth of love it is to me that I must love a loathed enemy. What's this, what's this? A rhyme I learned even now from what I danced withal. Anon, anon, come let's away, the strangers all are gone. Can I go forward when my heart is here? Turn back to a woman to find my center out. Romeo! My cousin Romeo! Romeo! He is wise, and on my light hath stolen him home to bed. He ran this way and left this orchard wall. Call, good Mercutio. Nay, I shall conjure too. Romeo, <laughs> humors, passion, madman, lover. <laughs> Appear thou in the likeness of a sigh. Speak but one rhyme, and I am satisfied. Cry me but I mean. <laughs> Pronounce me but love and dove. Speak to my gossip Venus one fair word. 
heareth not, he stirreth not, he moveth not. <laughs> if is dead, I must conjure him. I conjure thee by Rosaline's bright eyes, by her fine forehead and scarlet lip, by her fine foot, straight leg, and quivering thigh, and the domain that there adjacent lie that thou appear to us. And if he hear thee, thou wilt anger him. This twould not anger him, twould anger him to raise the spirit of some strange nature in his mistress circle, <laughs> let it there stand till she had laid it and conjured it down. That were some spite. My invocation was fair and honest, and in his mistress' name, I speak only but to raise up him. Ah, come, he hath hid himself among these trees to be consorted with the humorous knight. Blind is his love, and best befits the dark. If love be blind, love cannot hit the mark. Oh, Romeo, <laughs> oh that she were, oh that she were an open arse, and now a pauperin' pair. Good night, Romeo, out to my truckle bed. This field bed is far too cold for me to sleep. Come. Shall we go? Uh, go then, for tis in vain to seek him here. That means not to be found. He jests at scars that never felt a wound. But soft, what light through yonder window breaks? It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon, who is already sick and pale with grief, that thou, her maid, art far more fair than she. Be not her maid, since she is envious. Her vestal livery is but sick and green, and none but fools do wear it. Cast it off! It is my lady. Oh, it is my love. Oh, that she knew she were. She speaks, yet she says nothing. What of that? Her eye discourses. I will answer it. I am too bold. Tis not to me she speaks. Too the fairest stars in all the heaven, having some business, do entreat her eyes to twinkle in their spheres till they return. What if her eyes were there, they in her head? The brightness of her cheek would shame those stars as daylight doth a lamp. Her eye in heaven would, through the airy region, stream so bright that birds would sing and think it were not night. See how she leans her cheek upon her hand, Oh, that I were a glove upon that hand, that I might touch that cheek. I me. She speaks! Oh, speak again, bright angel! Oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name, or, if thou wilt not, be but sworn by love, and I'll no longer be a Catholic. Shall I hear more, or shall I speak at this? <laughs> to myself, because it is an enemy to thee. Had I it written, I would tear the word. My ears have yet, yet not drunk a hundred words of thy tongue's uttering, yet I know the sound. Art thou not Romeo and a Montague? Neither, fair maid, if either thee dislike. How camest thou hither? Tell me, and wherefore? The orchard walls are high, and hard to climb, and the place death, considering who thou art, if any of my kinsmen find thee here. By love's light wings did I overperch these walls, for stony linnets cannot hold love out, therefore thy kinsmen are no stop to me. If they do see thee, they will murder thee. <laughs> A 
Alack, there lies more peril in thine eye than twenty of their swords. Look thou but sweet, and I am proof against their enmity. I would not for the world they saw thee here. I have night's cloak to hide me from their eyes. And but thou love me, let them find me here. My life were better ended by their hate than death proked, wanting of thy love. By whose direction found'st thou out this place? By love that first it brought me to inquire. He lent me counsel, and I lent him eyes. Thou knowest the mask of night is on my face, else would a maiden blush be paint my cheek. For that which thou hast heard me speak tonight, fain would I dwell on form, fain. Say good night till it be morrow. 
the gray-eyed morn smiles on the frowning night, checkering the eastern clouds with streaks of light. Now, ere the sun advanced his burning eye, the day to cheer and night's dank dew to dry, I must have filled this austere cage of ours with baleful weeds and precious juice and flowers. Within the infant rind of this weak flower, poison hath residence and medicine power. For this being smelt with that part cheers each part. Being tasted slays all senses with the heart. Two such opposed kings encamp them still, in man as well as herbs, grace and rude will. And where the worser is predominant, full soon the canker death eats up that plant. Good morrow, father. Benedicite, what early tongue so sweet saluted me? Young son, it argues a distempered head so soon to bid good morrow to thy bed. Therefore, thy earliness doth me or sure thou art aroused with some distemperature. Or, if not so, then here I hit it right. Our Romeo hath not been in bed tonight. That last is true, the sweeter rest was mine. God pardon sin. Wast thou with Rosaline? With Rosaline, my ghostly father? No, I have forgot that name and that name's woe. That's my good son. Where hast thou been then? I'll tell thee ere thou askest me again. I have been feasting with mine enemy, where on a sudden one hath wounded me, that by me wounded both our remedies within thy help and holy physic lies. Be plain, good son. Rest homely in thy drift. Riddling confession finds but riddling shrift. And plainly know my heart's dear love is set on the fair daughter of rich Capulet. As mine on hers, so hers is set on mine. And all combined, save what thou must combine by holy marriage. When and where and how we met, we wooed and made exchange a vow. I'll tell thee as we pass, but this I pray, that thou consent to marry us today. Holy Saint Francis! What a change is here! Is Rosaline that thou didst love so dear, so soon forsaken? Young men's love then lies, not truly in their hearts, but in their eyes. Thou chidst me oft for loving Rosaline. For doting, not for loving, pupil mine. And bad'st me bury love? Not in the grave to lay one in, another one out to have. I pray thee chide me not, her I love now, doth grace for grace and love for love allow. The other did not so. <laughs> she knew well. Thy love did read by rote that could not spell. But come, young waver, come go with me. In one respect I'll thy assistant be, for this alliance may so happy prove to turn your household rancor to pure love. Oh, let us hence, I stand on sudden haste. Wisely and slow, they run the they stumble that run fast. Where the devil should this Romeo be? Came you not home tonight? Not to his father's. I spoke with his men. Why, that same pale, hard-hearted wench, that Rosaline, torments him so that he will sure run mad. Tybalt, the kinsman to old Capulet, hath sent a letter to his father's house. A challenge on my life. Romeo will answer it. Any man that can write may answer a letter. Nay, he will answer the letter's master how he dares, being dared. Alas, poor Romeo, he's already dead, run through the ear with the love song, the very pin of his heart cleft with the blind bow boy's butt shaft. <laughs> and is he a man to encounter Tybalt? Why, what is Tybalt? More than a prince of cats. Oh, he's the courageous capitan of compliments. He fights as you sing the prick song, keeps time, distance, and proportion. He rests his minimum, one, two, and the third in your bosom, the very butcher of a silken button. A duelist, a duelist, a gentleman, of the very first house, of the very first and second cause. Ah, the immortal Posado, the Punto Reverso, the hype, the what? The pox of such antic lisping affecting phantasms, these new tuners of accent. Why is this not a lamentable thing, grand desire? We should be thus afflicted by these strange flies, these fashion mongers, these bordeaux knees who stand so much in the new form they cannot sit at ease on the old bench. Uh, uh, here comes Romeo! Here comes Romeo! Without his robe! 
like a dried herring. Oh, flesh, flesh, how art thou fishified? <laughs> Signor Romeo, bonjour. There's a French salutation for your French slop. You gave us the counterfeit fairly last night. Good morrow to you both. What counterfeit did I give you? The slip, sir, the slip. Can you not conceive? Pardon, Mercutio, but uh, my business was great. And in such a case as mine, a man may strain courtesy. That's as much as to say such a case as yours constrains a man to bow in the hands. Meaning to curtsy. Thou hast most kindly hit it. A most courteous exposition. I am the very pink of courtesy. Pink for flower. Right. Why then is my pump well flowered? Hey, come between us, good Benvolio. My Sw wits faints. Switch and spurs, switch and spurs, or I'll cry a match. Oh, if our wits run the wild goose chase, I am done. For thou hast more of the wild goose in one of thy wits than I am sure I have in my whole five. <laughs> Was I with you there for the goose? Thou wast never with me for anything when thou wast not there for the goose. I would bite you in the ear for that jest. Nay, good goose, why <laughs> not? Why is not this better now than groaning for love? Now art thou sociable, now art thou Romeo, now art thou what thou art, by art as well as by nature. For this driveling love was like a great natural, running, Lolling up and down to hide his bobble in a hole. Oh, stop there! Stop there! Here's goodly gear! A sail! A sail! Two! Two! A shirt and a smock! Peter! Not my fan, Peter! Good Peter to hide her face for. Her fan's the fair face. Ooh! <laughs> God ye good morrow, gentlemen. God ye good e'en, fair gentlewoman. Is it good e'en? Tis no less, I tell you, for the body hand of the dial is now upon the prick of noon. <laughs> <laughs> Out upon you, what a man are you? One gentlewoman that God hath made himself to mar. By my troth, it is well said, for himself to mar, quoth I. Gentlemen, can any of you tell me where I may find the young Romeo? I can tell you, but young Romeo will be older when you have found him than he was when you sought him. I am the youngest of that name for fault of a worse. Well, if you be he, sir, then I desire some confidence with you. She will invite him to some supper. <laughs> abide! 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 So help. Romeo, will you to your fathers? We will dinner thither. I will follow you. <laughs> Farewell, ancient lady. <laughs> Farewell, lady, lady, lady! I pray you, sir, what saucy merchant was this that was so full of his ropery? A gentleman, nurse, that loves to hear himself talk and will speak more in a minute than he will stand to in a month. And to speak anything against me, I'll take him down. And a word lustier than he is, and twenty such jacks. And if I cannot, I'll find those that shall. I am none of his flirt gills. I am none of his skeins mates. And thou must stand by too, and suffer every day to use me at his pleasure. I saw no man use you at his pleasure. Now, before God, I am so vexed, and every part about me quivers, scurvy knave. Pray you, sir, a word. And as I told you, my young lady bid me inquire you out. What she bid me say, I will keep to myself. But first, let me tell you. If ye should lead her in a fool's paradise, as they say, truly it were gross behavior, as they say, for the gentlewoman is young. And therefore, if you should deal double with her, truly it were an ill thing to be offered to any gentlewoman and very weak dealing. Nurse, commend me to thy lady and mistress. I protest unto thee. Good heart and in faith, I will tell her as much. Lord, Lord, she will be a joyful woman. What wilt thou tell her, nurse, thou dost not mark me? I will tell her, sir, that you do protest, which, as I take it, is a gentleman-like offer. Bid her devise some means to come to shrift this afternoon. There she shall, at Friar Lawrence's cell, be shrived and married. Here's for thy pains. No, truly, sir, not a penny. <laughs> Go to, I 
I say you shall. This afternoon, sir? Well, she shall be there. And stay thou, good nurse, behind the abbey wall. Within this hour, my man shall be with thee, and bring thee cords made like a tackled stair, which to the high top gallant of my joy must be my convoy in the secret night. Farewell, be trusty, and I'll quit thy pains. Farewell, commend me to thy mistress. Now God in heaven bless thee. Peter! And I! Before and a place. The clock struck nine when I did send the nurse. In half an hour she promised to return. Perchance she cannot meet him. Oh, that's not so. Oh, she is lame. Love, he love herald should be thoughts which ten times faster glides than the sun's beams, driving back shadows over lowering hills. Therefore do nimbled pinion doves draw love, and therefore hath the wind-swift Cupid wings. Now is the sun upon the highmost hill of this day's journey, and from nine till twelve by three long hours, yet she is not come. Had she affections and warm, youthful blood, she would be in swift in motion as a ball. My words would bandy her to my sweet love and his to me. But old folks, many vain as if they were dead, <laughs> unwieldy, slow, heavy, and pale as lead. Oh God, she comes! Oh honey, nurse, what news? Hast thou met with him? Send thy man away. Peter, stay at the gate. Now good, sweet nurse. Oh Lord, why lookest thou sad? Though news be sad, yet tell them merrily. If good, thou shank'st the music of sweet news by playing it to me with so sour a face. I am a weary. Give me leave a while. By how my bones ache! What a jaunt have I had! I wouldst thou hast my bones and I thy news. Come now, come. I pray thee, nurse, speak. Good, good nurse, speak. Jesu, what haste! Can you not stay a while? Do you not see that I am out of breath? <laughs> how art thou out of breath when thou hast breath to say to me that thou art out of breath? The excuse that thou dost make in this delay is longer than the tale thou dost excuse. <laughs> is thy news good or bad? Answer to that. Say either, and I'll stay the circumstance. Let me be satisfied. Is it good or bad? Well, you have made a simple choice. You know not how to choose a man. Romeo? No, not he. Though his face be better than any man's. Yet his legs excels all men's. And for a hand, and a foot, and a body, though they be not to be talked on, <laughs> yet they are past compare. <laughs> he is not the flower of courtesy, but I'll warrant him as gentle as a lamb. <laughs> Go thy ways, wench, serve God. What, have you dined at home? No, no, but all this did I know before. What says he of our marriage? What of that? Lord, how my head aches. It beats as if it fall in twenty pieces. My back. Ah, uh, that's other side. Oh, my back, my back. But sure your heart for sending me about to catch my death with jaunting up and down. E faith, I am sorry that thou art so well. Sweet, sweet, sweet nurse, tell me, what says my love? Your love says, like an honest gentleman, and a courteous, and a kind, and a handsome, and I'll warrant a virtuous. Where is your mother? Where is my mother? Why, she is within, where should she be? How oddly thou replies! Your love says, like an honest gentleman, where is your mother? Oh, God's lady dear, are you so hot? Mary, come up, I trow. Is this the poultice for my aching bones? Henceforward, do your messages yourself. Here's such a coil. Come, what says Romeo? Have you got leave to go to shrift today? I have. Then hie you hence to Friar Lawrence's cell. There stays a husband to make you a wife. Ah, uh, now comes the wanton blood up in your cheeks. Hie you to church, I must another way. To fetch a ladder by the which your love must climb a bird's nest soon when it is dark. I am the drudge and toil in your delight, but you shall bear the burden soon at night. Go, hie to dinner, hie you to the cell. Hie to high fortune, honest nurse, farewell. So. 
So smile the heavens upon this holy act that after hours with sorrow chide us not. Come in, come in, but come what sorrow can, it cannot countervail the exchange of joy one short minute gives me in her sight. These violent delights have violent ends, therefore love moderately. Long love doth so, too swift arrives as tardy as too slow. Good even to my ghostly confessor. <laughs> Romeo shall thank thee, daughter, for us both. As much to him. Else in his thanks too much. Ah, uh, Juliet, <laughs> come, come with me. <laughs> and we will make short work, for by your leaves you shall not stay alone till Holy Church incorporate two in one. Oh, I pray thee, good Mercutio, let's retire. The day is hot, the Capulets abroad, and if we meet, we shall not scape a brawl. For now, these hot days is the mad blood stir. Come, come, thou art as hot a jack in thy mood as any in Italy, and as soon moved to be moody, and as soon moody to be moved. Uh, and what too? Nay, and there were two such, and we shall have none shortly, for one would kill the other. Why, thou, thou wilt quarrel with a man, that the hair more, or a hair less on his beard than thou hast. Thou wilt quarrel with a man for cracking nuts, having no other reason than thou hast hazel eyes. What eye but such an eye would spy out such a quarrel? Why, thou, thou hast quarreled with a man for coughing in the street because he had wakened thy dog that lain asleep in the sun, and yet thou wilt tutor me for quarreling. And I were so apt to quarrel as thou art. Any man should by the be simple of my life. For an hour and a quarter. The fee simple. Oh, simple. By my head, here come the Capulets. By my heel, I care not. Follow me close, for I will speak to them. Gentlemen, good den. A word with one of you. And but one word with one of us. Couple it with something. Make it a word and a blow. You shall find me apt enough to that, sir, and you will give me occasion. Could you not take some occasion without giving? Mercutio, thou consort with Romeo. Consort! What dost thou make us? Minstrels? And thou make minstrels of us. Look to hear nothing but discords. Here's my fiddlestick. Here's that shall make you dance. Come, consort! Oh, we talk here in the public haunt of men. Either withdraw unto some private place, or reason coldly of your grievances, or else depart. Here all eyes gaze on us. Men's eyes were made to look. Let them gaze. I will not budge for no man's pleasure, I. Well, peace be with you, sir. Here comes my man. But I'll be hanged, sir, if he wear your livery. Romeo, the love I bear thee can afford no better turn than this. Thou art a villain. Tybalt. The reason that I have to love thee doth much excuse the appertaining rage to such a greeting. Villain am I none, therefore farewell, I see thou know'st me not. Boy, this shall not excuse the injuries that thou hast done me, therefore turn and draw. I do protest I never injured thee, but love thee better than thou canst devise, till thou shalt know the reason of my love. And so good Capulet, which name I tender as dearly as my own, be satisfied. Ah, come, dishonorable, vile submission. Alla staccata carries it away. Tybalt, you rat catcher. Will you walk? What wouldst thou have with me? Good king of cats, not but one of your nine lives, which I mean to make bold withal. And as you use me hereafter, dry beat the rest of the eight. I am for you. Uh, uh, gentle Mercutio, put thy rapier up! Come, sir, your posado. Draw Benvolio, beat down their weapons! <laughs> Gentlemen, for shame, prepare this outrage! Tybalt, Mercutio, yeah. Prima, expressly hath forbidden bandying in Verona Street! <laughs> Oh, Tybalt! Good Mercutio! 
old tiger. <laughs> oh, I'm hurt. Uh, a plague of both your houses. I'm sped. Is he gone and hath nothing? What, art thou hurt? I, a scratch, a scratch, Mary, tis enough. Courage, man, the hurt cannot be much. I, tis not so deep as a well, nor so wide as a church door, but tis enough, twill serve. Ask for me tomorrow, and you shall find me a grave man. I'm peppered, I warrant, for this world. Duh! A plague of both your houses! What? Uh, a dog, a rat, a mouse, a cat, to scratch a man to death! A braggart, a rogue, a villain that fights! Fights by the book of arithmetic! Why the devil came you between us? I was hurt under your arm. I thought all for the best. Help me into some house, good Benvolio, or I shall beat. Uh, they've made worms me to me. I have it, and soundly too. Your houses! This gentleman, the prince's near ally, my very friend, hath got his mortal hurt on my behalf. My reputation stained with Tybalt's slander, Tybalt, that an hour hath been my cousin. Oh, dear Juliet, thy beauty hath made me effeminate and in my temper softened valor steel. Oh, Romeo! Romeo! Good Mercutio's dead. This but begins the woe, others must end. Here comes the furious Tybalt back again. Now, Tybalt, take the villain back again. That lath thou gavest me, for Mercutio so lays but a little way above our heads, staying for thine to keep him company. Either thou, or I, or both must go with him. Thou wretched boy who didst consort him hither, shall with him hang. <laughs> 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 Mercutio. Tybalt? My cousin? Oh, my brother's child, oh, prince, oh, cousin, husband, all the blood has spilled of my dear kinsman. Prince of thou art you, for blood of our shed blood of Montague. Oh, cousin, cousin. Benvolio, who began the spray? Tybalt here slain, whom Romeo's hand did slay. Romeo, that spoke him fair and urged with all your high displeasure. All this uttered with gentle breath, calm look, knees humbly bowed, cannot take truce with the unruly spleen of Tybalt's death to peace, but that he tilts with piercing steel at bold Mercutio's breast, who all is hot turns deadly point to point. Romeo, he cries aloud, hold friends, friends, art, and twixt them rushes underneath whose arm an envious thrust from Tybalt hit the life of stout Mercutio. And then Tybalt fled, but by and by comes back to Romeo, who had but newly entertained revenge, and to which they go like lightning, for ere I could draw to part them, was stout Tybalt slain. And as he fell, did Romeo turn and fly. This is the truth, or let Benvolio dead. 
dark. He is a kinsman to the Montague. Affection makes him false. He speaks not true. Some 20 of them fought in his black strife, and to all those 20 could but kill one life. I beg for justice, which thou, prince, must give. Romeo slew Tybalt. Romeo must not live. Romeo slew him. He slew Mercutio, who now the price of his dear blood doth owe. Not, for, not Romeo, prince. He was Mercutio's friend. His fault concludes, but what the law should end the life of Tybalt. And for that offense, immediately do we exile him hence. I have an interest in your heart's proceeding. My blood for your rude brawl doth lie a bleeding. But I'll immerse you with so strong a fine that you shall all repent the loss of mine. It will be death to pleading and excuses, nor tears nor prayers shall purchase out abuses. Therefore use none. Let Romeo hence in haste. Else when he is found, that hour is his last. <laughs> Tell the pace, you fiery-footed steeds, towards Phoebus lodging, such a wagoner as Phaeton would whip you to the west and bring in cloudy night immediately. Spread thy close curtain, love performing night, that runaway's eyes may wink, and Romeo leap to these arms, untalked of and unseen. Lovers can see to do their amorous rites, and by their own beauties, or if love be blind, that best agrees with night. Come, civil knight, put my unmanned blood baiting in my cheeks with thy black mantle, till strange love grow bold. Come, knight, come, Romeo, come, thou day in night, for thou wilt lie upon the wings of night, whiter than new snow upon a raven's back. Come, gentle knight, come, loving, black-browed knight, give me my Romeo, and when I die, Take him and cut him out in little stars, and he will make the face of heaven so fine that all the world will be in love with night and pay no worship to the garish sun. I have bought the mansion of love, but not possessed it. And though I am sold, not yet enjoyed, so tedious is this day, as is the night before some festival to an impatient child that hath new robes and may not wear them. <laughs> oh, here comes my nurse. Now, nurse, what news? What hast thou there? The cords that Romeo bid thee fetch. Aye, aye, the cords. I mean, what news? Why dost thou wring thy hands? Oh, well, a day, he's dead, he's dead. We are undone, lady, we are undone. Alack, the day, he's gone, he's killed, he's dead. Can heaven be so envious? Romeo can, no, heaven cannot. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, whoever would have thought it, Romeo. What devil art thou that dost torment me thus? If he be slain, say I, if not, no. Brief sounds determine of my weal or woe. I saw the wound, I saw it with mine eyes. A piteous corpse, a bloody piteous corpse. Pale, pale as ashes, all bedaubed in blood, all in gore blood, I swooned it at the sight. Oh, break my heart, poor bankrupt, break at once! Romeo, come forth, come forth, thou simple man! Father, what news, what is the prince's doom? What sorrow craves acquaintance at my hand that I yet know not? Too familiar is my dear son with such sour company. I bring thee tidings of the prince's doom. What less? Then doomsday is the prince's doom. A gentler judgment banished from her lips, not body's death, but body's banishment. Ha! Banishment. Be merciful, say death, for exile hath more terror in this look, much more than death. Do not say banishment. Oh, Tybalt, Tybalt, the best friend I have. Oh, courteous Tybalt, honest gentleman, that ever I should live to see thee dead. What storm is this that blows so contrary? Is Romeo slaughtered, and is Tybalt dead? My dearest cousin, and my dearer lord. Tybalt is gone, and Romeo banished. Romeo that killed him, he is banished. Hear from Verona art thou banished. Be patient, for the world is broad and wide. There is no world without Verona walls, but purgatory, torture, hell itself. And banished, is banished from the world. Oh, God. Did Romeo's hand shed Tybalt's blood? It did, it did, alas the day, it did. Oh, deadly sin, oh, rude unfaithfulness. Thy fault our law calls death, 
But the kind prince, taking thy part, hath rushed aside the law, and turned that black word death to banishment. This is dear mercy, and thou seest it not. O oh, serpent heart, hid with a flowering face, did ever a dragon keep so fair a cave? Beautiful tyrant, fiend angelical, O oh, nature, what hast thou to do in hell when thou didst bower the spirit of a fiend in mortal paradise of such sweet flesh? Tis torture and not mercy. Heaven is here where Juliet lives and every cat and dog and little mouse, every unworthy thing lives here in heaven and may look on her, but Romeo may not. He is banished. Hadst thou no poison mix, no sharp brown knife, no sudden mean of death, though ne'er so mean, but banish it to kill me, banish it? There's no trust, no faith, no honesty in men. All perjured, all forsworn, all naught, all dissemblers. Shame comes, Romeo. Blistered be thy tongue for such a wish. He was not born to shame. Upon his brow shame is a shame to sit. Oh, what a beast was I to chide him. Will you speak well of him that killed your cousin? Shall I speak ill of him that is my husband? Ah, oh, poor my lord. What tongue shall smooth thy name when I, thy three hours wife, have mangled it? But wherefore, villain, didst thou kill my cousin? Then, fond madman, hear me speak. Oh, thou wilt speak again of banishment. That villain cousin would have killed my husband. My husband lives that Tybalt would have slain, and Tybalt dead that would have slain my husband. All this is comfort. Wherefore weep I then? I'll give thee armor to keep off that word. Adversity, sweet milk, philosophy to comfort thee, though thou art banished. Some words there was worser than Tybalt's death. Tybalt is dead, and Romeo banished. Yet banished? Yet banished, that one word banished, had slain ten thousand Tybalt. Hang up philosophy, unless philosophy can make a Juliet, displant a town, reverse a prince's doom. It helps not, it prevails not, talk no more. Oh, then I see that madmen have no ears. How should they when wise men have no eyes? Tybalt's death was woe well enough if it had ended there. Romeo is banished. To speak such a word is father, mother, Tybalt, Romeo, Juliet, all slain, all dead. Romeo is banished. There is no end, no limit, measure, bound in that word's death. No words can that woe sound. Let me dispute with thee of thy estate. Thou canst not speak of that thou dost not feel. Wert thou as young as Juliet, my love? An hour but married, Tybalt murdered, doting like me, and like me banished. Then mightst thou speak, then mightst thou tear thy hair, and fall upon the ground as I do now, taking the measure of an unmade grave. Take up those cords, poor ropes you are beguiled, both you and I, for Romeo is exiled. He made you for a highway to my bed, but I am made, die maiden in widowed. Oh, tell me, friar, tell me, in what vile part of the anatomy doth my name lodge? Come, court, come, nurse, I'll to my wedding bed, and death not Romeo, take my maiden head. Oh, tell me, so that I may sack the hateful mansion. No! Hold thy desperate hand! <clears throat> Art thou a man? Thy wild acts denote the unreasonable fury of a beast! Thou hast amazed me. By my holy order, I thought thy disposition better tempered. What? Rouse thee, man. Thy Juliet is alive. There art thou happy. Tybalt would kill thee, but thou slewest Tybalt. There art thou happy. The law that threatened death became thy friend and turned it to exile. There art thou happy. A pack of blessings light upon thy back. Happiness courts thee in her best array. But like a misshapen and sullen wench, thou frownest upon thy fortune and thy love. Take heed, take heed, for such die miserable. Go, get thee to thy love as was decreed. Ascend her chamber, hence and comfort her. Hide to your chamber, I'll find Romeo. To comfort you, I watch well where he is. 
Hark ye, your Romeo will be here at night. All to him, he is hid at Lauren's cell. Oh, find him, bring this ring to my true knight, and bid him come to take his last farewell. But look, thou stay not till the watch be set, for then thou canst not pass to Mantua, where thou shalt stay till we can find a time to blaze your marriage, reconcile your friends, beg pardon of thy prince, and call thee back with twenty hundred thousand times more joy than thou wentst forth in lamentation. But that a joy past joy calls out on me, if it were a grief so brief to part with thee. Farewell. Things have fallen out, sir, so unluckily, that we have had no time to move our daughter. Look you, she loved her kinsman Tibble dearly, and so did I. Well, we were born to die. Tis very late, she'll not come down tonight. I promise you, but for your company, I would have been abed an hour ago. These times of woe afford no times to woo. Madam, good night. Commend me to your daughter. I will, and know her mind early tomorrow. Tonight she's mewed up to her heaviness. Sir Paris, I'll make a desperate tender of my child's love. I think she will be ruled in all respects by me. Nay more, I doubt it not. Wife, go you to her ere you go to bed. Acquaint her here of my son Paris's love, and bid her mark you me on Wednesday next. But soft, what day is this? Monday, my lord. Monday? <laughs> well, Wednesday is too soon. A Thursday let it be. <laughs> A Thursday tell her she shall be married to this noble earl. Will you be ready? Do you like this haste? <laughs> we will have no great ado, a friend or two. For hark you, Tybalt being slain so late, it may be thought we held him carelessly, being our kinsman, if we rebel much. Therefore we will have some half a dozen friends, and there an end. But what say you to Thursday? My lord, I would that Thursday were tomorrow. Well, get you gone, and Thursday be then. Go you to Juliet, ere you go to bed, prepare her wife against this wedding day. Farewell, my lord. <laughs> Light to my chamber, ah! Oh, for me it is so late that we may call it early by and by. Good night. <laughs> Come, go with me, wife. <laughs> <laughs> was the lark, the herald of the morn. O nightingale, look, love, with envious streaks do lace the severing clouds in yonder east. I must be gone and live, or stay and die. Yonder way is not daylight, I know it I. It is some meteor that the sun exhales to be to thee on this night a torchbearer and light thee on thy way to Mantua. Therefore, stay yet, thou needst not to be gone. Let me be tain, let me be put to death. I am content so thou wilt have it so. I have more care to stay than will to go. Come death and welcome, Juliet wills it so. How is my soul? Let's talk, it is not day. It is. It is, I hence be gone away. It is the lark that sings so out of tune. Some say the lark makes sweet division. This doth not so, for she divideth us. Oh, now be gone, more light and light it grows. More light and light, more dark and dark are woes. Madam, nurse, your lady mother is coming to your chamber. The day is broke, be wary, look about. And window let day in, and let life out. Farewell, farewell, one kiss and I'll descend. Art thou gone so? Love, Lord, my husband, friend, I must hear from thee every day in the hour, for in a minute there are many days. I will omit no opportunity to convey my grievance, love, to thee. Oh, thinkst thou we shall ever meet again? I doubt it not, and all these woes shall serve for sweet discourses in our time to come. Adieu, adieu. Oh, fortune, 
fortune, all men call thee fickle. If thou art fickle, what dost thou with him that is renowned for faith? Be fickle, fortune, for then I hope thou wilt not keep him long, but send him back. O oh, daughter, are you up? Who is that calls? Is it my lady mother? Is she not down so late or up so early? Well, unaccustomed cause procures her hither. Why, how now, Juliet? Madam, I am not well. Evermore weeping for your cousin's death. What wilt thou wash him from his grave with tears? And if thou couldst, thou couldst not make him live. Therefore have done. Some grief shows much of love, but much of grief shows still somewhat of wit. Yet let me weep for such a feeling loss. So shall you feel the loss, but not the friend which you weep for. Feeling so the loss, I cannot choose but ever weep the friend. Well, girl, thou weep'st not so much for his death as that the villain lives which slaughtered him. What villain, madam? That same villain, Romeo. Villain, and he be many miles asunder. God pardon. I do with all my heart, and yet no man like he doth grieve my heart. We will have vengeance for it. Fear thou not, then weep no more. All sent to one in Mantua, where the same banished runagate doth live, shall give him such an unaccustomed dram that he shall soon keep Tybalt company. And then I hope thou wilt be satisfied. Indeed, I never shall be satisfied with Romeo till I behold him. Dead is my poor heart, so poor a kinsman vexed. Madam, if you could find out but a man to bear the poison, I would temper it, that Romeo should, upon receipt thereof, soon sleep in quiet. Find thou the means, and I'll find such a man. But now, I'll tell thee joyful tidings, girl. And joy comes well in such needy times. What are they, beseech your ladyship? Well, well, thou hast a careful father, child. One who, to put thee from thy heaviness, hath sorted out a sudden day of joy. That thou expects not, nor I look not for. Madam, in happy time, what day is this? Mary, my child, early next Thursday morn, the gallant young and noble gentleman, the county pairs at St. Peter's Church, Shall happily make thee a joyful bride. Now by St. Peter's Church and Peter too, he will not make me there a joyful bride. I wonder at this haste that I must be wed ere he that should be husband comes to woo. I pray you, tell my lord and father, madam, I will not marry yet. And when I do, I swear it shall be Romeo, whom you know I hate, rather than Paris. These are news indeed. Here comes your father. Tell him so yourself, and see how he will take it at your hands. When the sun sets, the earth doth drizzle dew. But for the sunset of my brother's son, it rains downright. How now, a conduit girl, what still in tears? Have her more showering in one little body? Thou counterfeits a bar, a sea, a wind, for still thy eyes, which I may call the sea, do have been flow with tears? How now, wife? Have you delivered to her our decree? <laughs> Aye, sir, but she will not. She gives you thanks I would the fool were married to her grave. Soft, take me with you. Take me with you, wife. How will she none? Doth she not give us thanks? Is she not proud? Doth she not count her blessed? Unworthy as she is that we have wrought so worthy a gentleman to be her bridegroom. Proud can I never be of what I hate, but thankful even for hate that is meant love. How now, how now, chopped logic? What is this? Proud, and I thank you, and I thank you not? Thank me no thankings, nor proud me no crowds, but fettle your fine joints against Thursday next to go with Paris to St. Peter's Church, or I will drag thee unheard of thither. Out, you green sickness, carry on. Out, you baggage, you tell of face. Fine, fine, what are you mad? My father, I beseech you on my knees. Hear me with patience, but to speak a word. Hang thee, young baggage. Disobedient wretch, I tell thee what. Get thee to church a Thursday, or never have to look me in the face. Speak not, reply not, do not answer me. My fingers itch, wife. 
we, we scarce thought us blessed that God had lent us but this only child. But now I see this one is one too much and that we have a curse in having her out on our hill day. Yes! God in heaven bless her. You are to blame, my lord, to rate her so. And why, my lady wisdom, hold your tongue? Good prudence, madam, with the gossip. Go! You are too hot! God's bread, it makes me mad! Day, night, hour, ride, time, work, play, alone, in company, still my care hath been to have her matched. And having now provided a gentleman of noble parentage, stuffed as they say with honorable parts, proportioned as one's thought would wish a man, and then to have a wretched puling fool to answer, I will not wed, I cannot love. I am too young, I pray you pardon me, but, and you will not wed, I will pardon you. Graze where you will, you shall not house with me. Look to it, think on, I do not use to jest. Thursday is near, lay hand on heart, advise, and you be mine, I will give you to my friend, and you be not. Hang, beg, starve, die in the streets. For by my soul I'll ne'er acknowledge thee, nor what is mine shall never do thee good. Trust to it, bethink you. I will not be forsworn. Is there no pity sitting in the clouds that sees into the bottom of my grief? Oh, sweet, my mother, cast me not away. Delay this marriage for a month, a week, or if you do not, make the bridal bed in that dim body where devil lies. Talk not to me, for I'll not speak a word. Do as thou wilt, for I have done with thee. to nothing, that he dares ne'er come back to challenge you, or if he do, it needs must be by stealth. And since the case so stands, that now it doth, I think it best you married with the county. Oh, he's a lovely gentleman. <laughs> Romeo's a dishclout to him. In eagle, madam, hath not so green, so quick, so fair an eye as Paris hath. But shrew my very heart, I think you are happy in the second match, for it excels your first. Or if it did not, your first is dead, or twere as good he were as living here, and you know use of him. Speakest thou from thy heart? And from my soul too, or else beshrew them both. Amen. What? Well. Thou hast comforted me marvelous much. Go in and tell my lady I am gone, having displeased my father, to learn to sell, to make confession, and to be absolved. Marry, I will, and this is wisely done. Ancient damnation, almost wicked fiend, go, counselor! Thou and my bosom henceforth shall be twain. All to the friar to know his remedy. If all else fail, myself have power to die. On Thursday, sir? Thursday? The time is uh, very short. My father, Capulet, will have it so, and I am nothing slow to slack his haste. <clears throat> you say you do not know the lady's mind? <sighs> Uneven is the course, I... I like it not. Immoderately she weeps for Tybalt's death, and therefore have I little talks of love, for Venus smiles not in a house of tears. Now, sir, her father counts it dangerous that she doth give her sorrow so much sway, and in his wisdom haste our marriage to stop 
the inundation of her tears, which too much minded by herself alone may be put from her by society. Now do you know the reason of this haste? I would I knew not why it should be slowed. Look, sir, here comes the lady towards my cell. Happily met, my lady and my wife. That may be, sir, when I may be a wife. That may be, must be, love, on Thursday next. What must be, shall be. That's a certain text. Come you to make confession to this father? To answer to that, I should confess to you. Do not deny to him that you love me. I will confess to you that I love him. So will ye. I am sure that you love me. If I do so, it is of more price being spoke behind your back than to your face. Poor soul. Thy face is much abused with tears. The tears have got small victory by that, for it was bad enough before their spite. Thy face is mine, and thou hast slandered it. It may be so, for it is not mine own. Are you at leisure, holy father, now, or shall I come to thee at evening mass? My leisure serves me, pensive daughter, now. Uh, my lord, we must entreat the time alone. God shield, I should disturb devotion. Juliet, on Thursday early will I rouse ye? Until then, adieu, and keep this holy kiss. Oh, shut the door. I already know thy grief. It streams me past the compass of my wits. I hear thou must, and nothing may prorogue it. On Thursday next be married to this county? Tell me not, Briar, that thou hearest of this, unless thou tell me how I may prevent it. God joined my heart, and Romeo, thou our hands. And ere this hand by thee to Romeo sealed shall be the label to another deed. Or my true heart, with treacherous revolt, turn to another. This <laughs> shall slay them both. Therefore, out of thy long, experienced time, give me some present counsel. Be not so long to speak. I long to die. Hold! Thou speak, speak not, a remedy. Hold, daughter. I do spy a kind of hope. If rather than to marry County Paris, thou hast the strength of will to slay thyself, then is it likely thou wilt undertake a thing like death to chide away this shame. And if thou darest, I'll give thee remedy. Oh, bid me leap rather than marry Paris from off the battlements of any tower, or walk in thievish ways, or bid me lurk where serpents are. Chain me with roaring bears, or hide me nightly in a charnel house, or recovered quite with dead men's rattling bones. And I will do it, without fear or doubt, to live an unstained wife to my sweet love. Hold then, go home, be merry, give consent to marry Paris. Wednesday is tomorrow. Tomorrow night, look that thou liest alone. Take thou this vial, being then in bed, and this distilling liquor drink thou off. When presently through all thy veins shall run a cold and drowsy humor, for no pulse, no warmth, no breath shall testify thou livest. And in this borrowed likeness of shrunk death, thou shalt continue two and forty hours, and then awake as from a pleasant sleep. Now, in the morning, when the bridegroom comes to rouse thee from thy bed, there art thou dead. And as the manner of our country is, thou shalt be born to that same ancient vault where all the kindred of the Capulets lie. In the meantime, against thou shalt awake, shall Romeo, by my letters, know our drift. And hither shall he come, and that very night shall Romeo bear thee hence Mansion. Oh, give me, give me, tell not me of fear. Be strong and prosperous. Love, give me strength, and strength shall help afford. Farewell, dear father. So many guests invite as near our writ. Oh, sirrah, go hire me twenty cunning cooks. You shall have none ill, sir, for I'll try if they can lick their fingers. How canst thou try them so? Mary, sir, tis an ill cook that cannot lick his own fingers. Therefore, he that cannot lick his own fingers goes not with me. Go be gone. We shall be much unfurnished for this time. What? Is my daughter gone to Friar Lawrence? Aye, forsooth. 
Well, even a chance to do some good on her. A peeve herself of the parliamentary it is. See where she comes from, Shrift, with merry look. How now, my head strong? Where have you been getting? For I have learnt me to repent the sin of disobedient opposition to you and your behests, and am enjoined by holy lords to fall prostrate here and beg your pardon. Pardon, I beseech you. Henceforth, I am ever ruled by you. <laughs> Why, I'm glad aunt. This is well. Stand up. <laughs> this is as it should be. <laughs> Let me see the county. I will have this knot knit up tomorrow morning. <laughs> Nurse, will you go with me into my closet to help me sort such needful ornaments as you think fit to furnish me tomorrow? No, not till Thursday. There's time enough. We'll go to church tomorrow. Go, nurse. Go with her. We shall be short in our provision, tis now near night. I shall let stir about, and all things shall be well. I warrant thee, wife. Go you to Juliet, help to deck up her. I'll not to bed tonight. Let me alone. I'll play the housewife for this once. What ho! <laughs> They're all forth. Well, I will walk myself to County Paris to prepare him up against tomorrow. My heart is wondrous light, since the same wayward girl is so reclaimed. <laughs> I have to tires our best, but gentle nurse, I pray thee leave me to myself tonight, for I have need of many orisons to move the heavens to smile upon my state, which well thou knowst is cross and full of sin. What are you busy, Hope? Need you my help? No, madam. We have called such necessaries as our behoovel for our state tomorrow. So please you. Let me now be left alone, and let the nurse this night sit up with you, for I am sure you have your hands full all in this so sudden business. Good night. Get thee to bed and rest, for thou hast need. Farewell. God knows when we shall meet again. I have a faint, cold fear thrills through my veins that almost freezes up the heat of fire. I'll call them back again to comfort me. Nurse! What should she do here? My dismal scene, I needs must act alone. Come, Vile. What if this mixture do not work at all? Shall I be married then tomorrow morning? No, no, this shall forbid it. Lie thou there. What if? It be a poison that the friar subtly hath ministered to have me dead, lest in this marriage he should be dishonored because he married me before to Romeo. I fear it is, and yet he thinks it not, for he hath still been tried a holy man. How, if when I am laid into the tomb, I wake before the time that Romeo comes to redeem me, there is a fearful point. Shall I not then be stifled in the vault to whose foul mouth no healthsome air breathes in, and there thy strangled ere my Romeo comes? For if I live, is it not very like the horrible conceit of death and night, together with the terrors of the place, as in a vault, an ancient receptacle, where for these many hundred years the bones of all my buried ancestors are packed? Where bloody Tybalt, yet but green in earth, lies festering in his shroud. For as they say, at some hours of the night, spirits resort. Oh, if I do wake, shall I not be distraught, environed with all these hideous fears, and madly play with my forefather's joints, and pluck the mangled Tybalt from his shroud, and in this rage, with some great kinsman's bone, as with a club, dash out my death. Romeo, Romeo, Romeo. 
fetch more spices. Nurse? They call for dates and quinces in the pastry. Come, stir, stir, stir. The second cock hath crowed. The curfew bell has rung. Tis three o'clock. Go, you cot queen, go. Get you to bed. Faith, you'll be sick tomorrow for this night's watching. No, what? Not a whit. I have kept watch ere now all night for less cause and ne'er been sick. Aye, you have been a mouse hunt in your time. The county will be here with music straight, for so he said it would. I hear him near. <laughs> go, waken Juliet, go and trim her up. I'll go and chat with Paris. Hi, make haste. The bridegroom is come already. Make haste, I say. Mistress, what mistress? Juliet, fast I warrant her she. What's lamb, my lady? Buy you slug a bed. You take your pennyworths now, sleep for a week. For I warrant the county Paris hath set up his rest that you shall rest but little. <laughs> oh, God forgive me, Mary, and amen. <laughs> How sound is she asleep? I, I must needs wake her. Madam! 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 What? Dressed and in your clothes and down again? I must needs wake you. Lady! 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 Alas, alas, help, help! My lady's dead! Oh, well a day that ever I was born! Some aquavita, help, my lord, my lady! What noise is here? Oh, well a day! What is the matter? Look, look! Oh, heavy day! Oh me! Oh me! My child! My only life revived! Look up or I will die with thee! Help, help, go, help! For shame, bring Juliet forth, for Lord is come! She's dead! Deceased, she's dead. Alack the day. Alack the day, she's dead. She's dead. She's ah, dead. Ah, let me see her. to return. Oh, son, the night before thy wedding day hath death lain with thy wife. There she lies. Death is my son-in-law, death is my heir. Have I thought long to see this morning's face, and doth it give me such a sight as this? What one, poor one, what poor and loving child, but one thing to rejoice and solace him, and cruel death hath catched him from my son. A woe, a woeful, woeful, woeful day. Peace, ho, oh, for shame, confusions. Heaven and yourself had part in this fair maid. Now heaven hath all, and all the better is it for the maid. Your part in her you could not keep from death, but heaven keeps his part in eternal life. Dry up your tears and stick your rosemary on this fair corpse, and as the custom is, all in her best array bear her to church. Sir, go you in, and madam, go with him, and go, Sir Paris. Everyone, prepare to follow this fair corpse unto her grave. The heavens do lower upon you for some ill. Move them no more by crossing their high will. Faith, we may put up our pipes to be gone. Honest, good fellows. Ah, oh, put up, put up. For well you know, this is a pitiful case. Come, we'll in here. Tarry for the mourners and stay dinner. <laughs> If I may trust the flattering truth of sleep, my dreams presage some joyful news at hand. I dreamt my lady came and found me dead. A strange dream that gives a dead man leave to think, and breathed such light with kisses in my lips that I revived and was an emperor. 
News from Verona, how now, Balthazar? Dost thou not bring me letters from the friar? How doth my lady, is my father well? How doth my lady Juliet that I ask again? For nothing can be ill if she be well. Then she is well, and nothing can be ill. Her body sleeps in Capo's monument. Her immortal part with angels live. I saw her laid low in her kindred's vault, and presently took pose to tell it you. Oh, pardon me for bringing this ill news, since you did leave it from my office, sir. Is it even so? Then I defy you, stars. Thou knowest my lodging. Bring me ink and paper, and hire post horses I will hence tonight. I do beseech you, sir, have patience. You look so pale and wild, and do impart some misadventure. Touch, thou art deceived. Leave me, and do the thing I bid thee do. Uh, hast thou no letters to me from the friar? No, my good lord. No, madam, get thee gone, and hire those horses. I will be with thee straight. Well, Juliet, I will lie with thee tonight. Let's see for means. Oh, mischief, thou art swift to enter in the thoughts of desperate men. I do remember an apothecary, and if a man did need a poison now, there lives a cage of French that would sell it him. The same should be the voice of Friar John. Welcome from Mantua. What says Romeo? Going to find a barefoot brother out, one of our order, to associate me here in this city, visiting the sick, and finding him, the searchers of the town, suspecting that we were both in a house where the infectious pestilence did reign, sealed up the doors and would not let us forth, so that my speed to Mantua there was stayed. Who bore my letter then to Romeo? I could not send it. Here it is again. Nor get a messenger to bring it thee. So fearful were they of infection. Unhappy fortune! By my brotherhood, this letter was not nice, but full of charge, of dear import, and the neglecting it may do much danger. Signal that thou hearest something approach. Whistle then to me. Do as I bid thee. Go. I am almost afraid to stand alone here in the churchyard, yet I will adventure. Sweet flower, with flowers thy bridal bed I strew, which with sweet water nightly I will do. The obsequies that I for thee will keep nicely shall be to strew thy grave. The boy gives warning, something doth approach. Stop thy unhallowed toil, vile Montague. Can vengeance be pursued further than death? Condemned villain, I do apprehend thee. Obey, and go with me, for thou must die. I must indeed, therefore came I hither. Good, gentle youth, tempt not a desperate man. Put not another sin upon my head by urging me to fury. Oh, be gone! By heaven, I love thee better than myself, for I come hither armed against myself. Stay not, be gone, live, and hereafter say a madman's mercy bid thee run away. I do defy thy commiseration, and apprehend thee for a felon here. Wilt thou provoke me? Have at thee, boy! Ah! Oh, Lord, they fight. I will go call the watch. Ah! I am slain. If thou be merciful, bury me here. Lie me 
with Juliet. In faith, I will. Let me peruse this face. Mercutius kinsman, noble county Paris. What said my man when my betossed soul did not attend him as we rode? I think he said Paris should have married Juliet. Said he not so, or did I dream it so? I will bury thee in a triumphant grave. The grave. Oh no, a lantern slaughtered youth. For here lies Juliet, and her beauty makes this vault a feasting presence full of light. Death, lie thou there by a dead man interred. <laughs> How oh, oft, when men are at the point of death, have they been married? Oh, my love, my wife. Death that hath sucked the honey of thy breath hath had no power yet upon thy beauty. Thou art not conquered. Beauty's ensign yet is crimson in thy lips and in thy cheeks, and death's pale flag is not advanced there. Tybalt, liest thou there in thy bloody sheet? Forgive me, cousin. Ah, Juliet, why art thou yet so fair? Should I believe that unsubstantial death is amorous, and that the lean and abhorred monster keeps thee here in dark to be his paramour? For fear of that, I still will stay with thee, with worms that are thy chambermaids. Here's to my love. Oh, true apothecary, <clears throat> thy drugs are quick. <clears throat> Thus, with a kiss, I die. No. <clears throat> <clears throat> Oh, happy 
Doomsday, whose untimely death banished the new made bridegroom from the city, for whom, and not for Tybalt, Juliet pined. You would have married her perforce to County Paris. Then come she to me, and with wild looks bid me devise some means to rid her from this second marriage. Then gave I her, so tutored by my art, a sleeping potion which wrought on her the form of death. Meantime, I writ to Romeo, but he which bore my letters, Friar John, was stayed by accident, and yesternight returned my letters back. Then all alone went I to take her from her kindred's vault. But when I came, here untimely lay the noble Paris and true Romeo dead. She wakes! And I entreated her, come forth. But a noise did scare me from the tomb, and she, too desperate, would not go with me, but, as it seems, did violence on herself. Where is Romeo's man? What can he say to this? I brought my master news of Juliet's death, and in post he came from Mantua. This letter here he bid me give his father. Give me the letter. I will look on it. Sirrah, what made your master in this place? He came with flowers to strew his lady's grave. And on came one with lights over the tomb, and by and by my master drew on him, and then I ran away to the watch. This letter doth make good the friar's words. Where be these enemies? Capulet? Montague? See what a scourge is laid upon your hate. That heaven finds means to kill your joys with love. And I, for winking at your discords too, have lost a brace of kinsmen. All are punished. Oh, Brother Montague, give me the hand. This is my daughter's jointure, for no more can I demand. But I can give thee more. For I will raise her statue in pure gold, that whiles Verona by that name is known, there shall no figure at that rate be set than that of true and faithful Juliet. As rich shall Romeo by his lady lie, poor sacrifices of our enmity. A glooming peace this morning with it brings. The sun for sorrow will not show his head, for never was a story of more woe than this of Juliet and her Romeo. <laughs> <laughs> 